Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now. I am Khina Gambhir. To kickstart the issue we will be discussing today, let me share a personal experience I had yesterday. I usually drive to work, but in the morning I found my car had a flat tire. I took a cab to work. After finishing Urban Debate, I booked a cab for myself via the cab aggregator Uber. The app informed that the cab was booked and the ride was about 8 minutes away so I was waiting for its arrival. You know around 10 minutes later the driver called me and inquired about my destination. I mentioned the address, he said okay and then he disconnected. Within seconds I received a notification saying that the driver has cancelled your trip and the app is now looking for another cab. Then a fresh cab was booked for me, a fresh cab booking notice was received again. and uh, the driver called and asked for my destination then told me to cancel the ride he said that he was not ready to take this booking even though it has been confirmed by uber and 10 minutes later he cancelled the ride again and it was around 9:48 pm it was getting late for me and i was left with no option so then i requested my office for a drop home it was immediately provided but you know I had this option last night. There are lakhs of commuters who don't. Drivers working under cab aggregator services like Ola and Uber have become a law unto themselves. Almost like the notorious Delhi auto wallas long ago, the arrival of these cab services were seen as a relief from the arbitrary attitude and harassment by auto taxi drivers in urban India. There are lakhs of complaints of cab drivers that are forcing customers to cancel trips as they want to honor a ride of the route and destination that suits them not the customer waiting time is getting longer for us we even heard the passengers complaining about drivers refusing to turn on the ac in peak summer and then there is a problem of surge pricing recently a journalist was charged twice for a ride one payment in the form of cash taken by the driver while ola had already deducted money from ola postpaid this service was activated by ola without the commuter's consent the ola faq for this postpaid says delay in payment would be informed to the non banking finance company and that will impact the commuter's credit rating with banks This is the kind of harassment the commuters today are facing and RBI clearly says it can't be done without the consent of commuters. Now this is the trauma viewers that is suffered by thousands of commuters every single day. Taking an Ola or an Uber no more means comfort and convenience. In fact, in a survey conducted by local circles where nearly 65,000 users were contacted, 71% of them had said that ride cancellation is a big problem, something that they face almost on a daily basis. 45% have said they were charged more than 1.5 times in surge pricing. Now, amid rise in number of complaints, the Consumer Affairs Ministry alerted by these This flood of complaints today held a meeting with the cab aggregators Ola, Uber, Meru, Rapido, Jugnu etc. The ministry sent out a very tough and a clear message. Either amend or face penalties. The companies have been told to improve their systems and redress consumer complaints. Take steps to end unfair trade practices and also explain algorithms that are used to decide prices when the demand is high. Now Uber in a response to Mirror Now's query on this issue today has said that the company is engaged with the government and appreciates the feedback. back will strive to be the platform of choice while this is one side of the story let's also tell you about what the cab drivers are saying because even they are facing a problem there is a reason why they are cancelling rides why are they not switching on the ac there is a reason why are they protesting what was once dubbed a lucrative model of cab business well there are concerns that they have raised skyrocketing fuel prices are to be blamed for the ride cancellation that we are seeing on a regular basis 
drivers have complained of no increase in fare cost by the companies over the past few years. There are no incentives for drivers. There are opaque policies and no redressal mechanisms. So while cab riders are suffering, there are concerns that cab drivers have raised as well. Now, amidst all of this, where should the consumers go? If Is this a fallout of the huge monopoly? Is tech innovation going haywire now? That's what we are going to discuss on Urban Debate at 8 p.m. on Mirror Now. Dr. Ajay Dua, former Secretary, Union Ministry of Commerce and Industry, is joining us on the broadcast. Bijan Mishra, consumer rights activist, is live with us. Advocate Shreyans Mamania, petitioner against Ola, is live with us. Mahesh Murthy, venture capitalist and head Pinstrom, is also joining us. And we are also joined by Kushbu Jain, Advocate Supreme Court. Appreciate all of you for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now this evening. Mr. Bijan Mishra, you know, I described what I faced yesterday night, but I had an option. I could ask my office to uh, provide me a cab at 9.48 p.m. There are many commuters today who are left stranded. What should they do? You know, Hina, I will start from the word you used, opaque policy. You see, you allow people to conduct business in our country. They come and invest. And they uh, kind of start working to uh, make profit out of their investment without any policy in our country to protect the consumer. Or any policy, for that matter, to protect that taxi owner or that car owner. So it is very, very important and paramount that before you allow anybody to conduct business in our country, like for example, I have been telling for the last more than 15 years, that before you allow e-commerce to come into the country, please make a law for them. But they have not made till now, they're still consulting, whereas you know the e-commerce is flourishing in our country, which is good for us. But one day we will all get stuck, especially the consumers, who pay the money, hard-earned money, to access product and services. And the uh, industry goes unaccountable, completely unaccountable, non-transparent, and they make hay while sunshine. So the, the profiteering continues, and the ministry goes to sleep till thousands of people go and don't go and complain. Why do you have to wait for consumer complaint? Why can't you bring a real, good, robust policy which is pro-India, in the interest of Indians, in the interest of the country, so that investments come? Come, people conduct business in an ethical manner, the consumer gets protected, and the country grows. And this is what we have learned from other countries, that before you go to any country to do business, like if an Indian goes overseas to do business, the first thing the Indian has to do is to follow the laws of that country. And here people come, start doing business. There is no law. They start conducting whatever investment they want to do at the cost of the consumer. And we as consumers always take that burden till a disaster doesn't happen, like it happened in the telecom industry. It happened in the insurance industry. It has happened in the banking industry. You know, we all wake up after the alarm bell rings and after the consumer speaks, like you spoke today about your experience, why did we have to wait for Hena's experience to be telecasted to bring a policy change? Why can't we bring a policy much before Hena spends that money to access that service, which is of high quality and standard? I will stop here. Very important points you have raised, Mr. Bijan Mishra. Let me also go across to Dr. Ajay Dua. Was cab aggregation a money-making idea with no built-in commute, uh, commuter right? Where should the consumers really go? This service came to India about, uh, you know, a decade ago, 2010, 2013. And today, just see how badly the consumers are suffering, the commuters, the problems that they are facing. You're absolutely right about that, and so was Mr. Bijan Mishra, who pointed out that we open up a sector to foreign investment, but at the same time, we are not ready with the rules or the regulations for it, 
and he gave the right example of e-commerce being opened up for FDI or to FDI, but how to conduct the e-commerce business, the regulations of it have yet to be notified now that the ministry is settled, et cetera, which is the administrative ministry, but why couldn't it be done at the, at the time when the uh, foreign money was allowed to come into this particular sector? So I'm one with him on that totally. I think having said that, let's look at it. We now do have a Consumer Protection Act, a comprehensive one, on lines fairly similar to what we, what are the rights in the advanced world enacted in 2019. Better late than never is all that I can say. This is in no way justifying 10 years of delay in even bringing all the acts together or all the rights of consumers together. Is the act, is the act consumer friend, friendly? That question comes to my mind. All right, there is a National Consumer Protection Authority a chief commissioner set up director generals or directors under him or her to point out, investigate, look into the complaints. But the consumer react, consumer interaction with a service provider is at a micro level. It's in a small town, it's in a village, it's in a, a city. What you need to have are four hours, to sort out these matters, representatives of these central protection authorities, or the, the central consumer protection authority, or the district redressal grievances commissions at almost every town where there is a certain amount of population. Today, <clears throat> we have a national commission, we have a redressal commission, we have a state commission, and also we have a district commission. It is possible that in a district, it may, there may be more than one, the law provides for it. But the question is, now even to go for a person from a Mufasil small town to a district headquarter, it's not easy to go and file a complaint, give up his or her job and go and pursue that case because it goes on a legalistic route. I think we have to be able to revisit the, our regulations on a wholesale basis and saying, if there is a population of say 10,000 persons in a, any settlement, whether you call it urban, you call it rural, immaterial of that, that there will be a locally available protection mechanism, which can, which gets uh, kicked in the moment a complaint comes to it or, or it's suaboto detects right. that the service providers are whether they are ganging up or whether there is an unfair unfair trade practice, whether there are misleading advertisements, whether co competitive prices are access to co competitive prices is being denied. So these kind of things, right. I think any welfare oriented government, I'm not even saying welfare, in a democracy, the consumer has a right, full right to be protected. Now that there is Absolutely. an act, the, what needs to be done is how is this act going to be enacted, enforced, rules, regulations, more and more institutions. Yes. Which, and finally, I just want to make one point of this. It doesn't have to be only government servants or people with a government background who are sitting in these grievances councils. It can, it can be consumers' representatives. It can be people who have had experience of production, mm -hmm. trading, you need to pick so that all points of view come in before a call is taken because these, yes. these bodies are empowered to impose penalties. So, so that fewer penalties, fewer yes. appeals go to the relevant appellate authorities, but work gets done for the consumer locally and in a fair and uh, impartial manner.
very interesting points you have raised, Dr. Dua. And I want to first focus on the point that you made earlier that it's not really easy to file a complaint as well today because there is no direct phone number that is given on the app. We are only asked to, you know, submit our uh, requests or any, you know, sort of feedback that we have to give or any complaint that we have to register via the app that we download uh, through which we, uh, you know, use this particular service. Let me go across to advocate uh, Shreyans as well. Uh, uh, who also had booked a taxi and was charged 62 rupees extra. Could you just explain to us your experience? Was it easy for you to file a complaint? And I believe you did manage to get a compensation from the cab aggregator, but it wasn't really a very easy process. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would say that being an advocate, it was a bit easy for me to lodge a complaint because I was well versed with the laws and the procedures as well. However, when I filed the complaint at that time, I didn't thought that I'm an advocate. I filed it as a in normal individual, a layman person. Because this has happened with me earlier as well. But at that point of time, I was not having any sufficient evidences to prove that this was the actual fare which was actually offered to me while booking the cab. And subsequently, when arriving at our my at my destination, some other fare was charged. But this time, I was a bit lucky that I could take a screenshot while booking the cab and the fare that was displayed while booking the cab. Later on, when I got down at that point of time, the cab driver insisted me to pay the higher fare by showing. And he also asked me to check in my phone as well to see that uh, what actually is the fare. I told him, but that, yes, at the time of booking, the fare was something else. It was 372 rupees. You are charging me 434, which is wrong. He was like, hey, sir, you pay kar do. Otherwise, I'll have to shell out from my pocket and you won't suffer loss. My boss won't suffer loss. Company also won't suffer loss. But ultimately, I'll have to shell it out. So I said, fine, let's do one thing. You don't do it because it's not your mistake. It is something wrong with the system. And that needs to be highlighted. So I paid him the entire amount and I relieved him. I then approached, uh, yes, very important part. We also tried contacting the customer care, but surprisingly, there is no customer care number available. So I told him that, boss, you speak with your uh, immediate supervisor or whosoever the person is. So he connected to his relationship manager. We spoke with him and they apparently told us that, sorry, sir, we, we don't have any such uh, information with us. This is just a relation, uh, relationship department between us and the cab driver. So we cannot address your grievance. I said, okay. Then I left, I said that uh, we cannot connect to the customer care. So I told him, you go, I'll then connect with the main company. Then I also tried uh, sending a notice that uh, this is what has happened and you should refund me my 62 rupees and the cost of the notice. You would be, you would actually laugh to hear that the actual claim I was claiming was 62 rupees. However, to send the notice, I incurred 70 rupees in postal charges. So even my family was laughing at me that to recover 62 rupees, you, you sent a notice and you incurred an expense of 70 rupees. I said, no, I will recover this cost as well from them. So they were laughing at me. I said, no, I'll keep hopes and I'll see to it that I get fair justice. Being a lawyer, if I cannot justify myself, then how will I help my clients? So this is what uh, encouraged me. I then uh, sent the notice, but uh, needless to say, they didn't bother to reply. And then ultimately I had to file a complaint in consumer forum. And before consumer forum also, they didn't appear. So within six months of time, I got an uh, order in my favor, wherein they directed me to the company to refund me 62 rupees, along with the uh, interest, uh, along with the compensation and legal costs. So totally 15,000 they were penalized with. So this is how my experience was. And uh, so six, 15,000 and 62 rupees you managed to get in yes. six months, but Kushbu Jain, not everybody is a lawyer. I mean, you are also a lawyer, but there are lakhs of commuters across the country who would not know this entire process. What they only want when they are out of their homes is to, you know, uh, quickly book a cab and reach their destination. But uh, uh, honestly speaking, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, after actually this case wasn't that yes. uh, famous until it got published in midday, thanks to Anurag sir. Uh, then actually after getting this thing published and when people started contacting me through Facebook, Instagram and all, they also sought my got my number from my online portal I believe. They contacted me, I tried helping them but the only common problem which I found was that no one was having the proof that while booking their cab this particular fare was showing. 
so i guided everywhere i also spoke on red fm and very nice requested everyone that while booking you should so take you a could screenshot. help others but like khushbu i asked you earlier not everybody you know uh, has the patience also to go through this entire process right absolutely so so to start with the uh, about the consumer the majority of road transport highways or uh, vehicle indicator lines 2020 and as these guidelines certain things which aggregators which is the uber and other have to follow and in if i may mention are those things that is a regulation starting fair as to you know how much or whether you can person to or the or maximum third party you can have is 1.5 uh, another other guideline compliance related cooling specific apologies khushbu for interrupting you there's some problem with your connection we will try and reconnect with khushbu in just a bit meanwhile if i could take that question across to mahesh murthy as well uh, mahesh murthy uh, now you know there is Uh, this element of opaque policy something that even the drivers have raised i mean of course riders are having a problem even the drivers have raised a lot of issues uh, what is your opinion on this entire story is this innovation this tech innovation now going haywire because of you know various reasons uh, I, i feel like i'm the only guy uh even though i have had bad experiences with uh, uber and ola i feel like i'm the only person who has a different point of view i think it's very easy to beat them up in fact i want to take your mind back to the time that somebody else said look at the horror in telecom what is the horror in telecom because of privatization uh, we have the world's cheapest telecom rates do you remember times of mtnl and you know 20 rupees a, a second a 20, you know calls what is the you know, horror of insurance because of insurance we have the cheap really cheap insurance policies you remember the horror of how lic has been missed out all over india and you know this comparisons are comparisons are made without really anybody thinking about it uh, have you tried to get a regulated government central government regulated sector like an auto rickshaw in bangalore to even go forget about agreeing to go and then cancelling how many times you have to beg an auto rickshaw in in mumbai to go how many times have you have you to beg a auto rickshaw or a kali pili in, in bangalore to go right i think it's it's very easy to beat everybody up But what is the government doing in, in areas that it directly regulates? Those are utilities regulated and licensed by the government. All right, this here is private companies. There is no redressal there. I heard the gentleman who said it, he fought to get sixty-two rupees back and got fifteen thousand sixty-two rupees back. Can you get one rupee back from the RTO, RTO for any miss miss sold auto rickshaw or kali pili, you know, black and yellow taxi ride? You can't. So I think let's let's really you know. focus on where the right is and where the wrong is uh, are the are uber and ola completely in the clear no they are not but are they certainly a uh, way far ahead from what it used to be the really dirty badly maintained premier padminis and bazaar re 150s which are in crappy condition breaking your backbones of course they are far ahead let's count our blessings where we should count them and let's give brickbats where they are deserved all right Uh, as far as policies go by the way they are public uh, uber is a public company its uh, policies are public and listed and as far as But, they're open sorry to interrupt can... mahesh murthy aren't these genuine issues that i have raised long waiting time but, but uh, saying that you, you know, know drivers cancelling the rides at the COVID. last minute making people wait the issue of surge pricing i mean i myself so, had to go through it I mean, yesterday honestly that was one of the reasons why i raised this issue today it was a coincidence that today uh, you know there was a meeting of the government with the representatives of these cab aggregators but what i said in the beginning was what i had to face not Absolutely. everybody Now, is you, uh, what, you know has this choice have, of calling another cab what imagine what you would have to face if there was no uber or ola and if you had to do this with a kali pili or a or a, or a you know or, or a cool cab you would have no redressal you would have nothing right no, so you know, come in the, there is still so there is still a choice out there now sure are the issues the only in okay. any case mr john mission one second i'll give you time to respond yeah. so my point here is that there are redressal mechanisms one second you can actually let mahesh murthy finish his point yes there uh, i have had the same problems as you have in every single case all you have to do is complain on the app within 60 seconds you get a refund all right you don't have to do 6 months uh, for a refund 
And yes, there are bad eggs on both sides, right? But I want to say that this, you cannot sit back and criticize private enterprise and venture funded enterprise uh, when you've had an extraordinary failure with the government regulated enterprise. Let's talk about auto rickshaws and kari peelis and uh, cabs and tell me about how good regulation has, and control is done there. There's done nothing there. But Kushbu Jain, the tech change was supposed to change the auto wala culture. The Kali oh, Pili taxi that? culture that Mahesh Murthy is talking about, all this was supposed to change with, you know, these Olas and Ubers that we got in the country about a decade back. But nothing has changed. Commuters are facing real problems today. I completely agree with you. Now, responding to Mr. Murthy, you know, none of the Kali Pili had 1.2x surcharge, 3.2x surcharge. They've never charged so exorbitant. Now, coming back to the to the aspect, I think going, I, I heard another advocate on the panel also, going on the yes, they were here to smooth, the technology is to smooth uh, user surface. But nonetheless, now coming back on the question that why we have to go as a consumer for small, small amount, you cannot afford legal fee, you cannot afford time, you cannot afford the energy to be to be put in for this small, small amount. So why not go on the, on the, on the basics that who gives them a license? Yes, they, the, the Motor Vehicle Act provided these aggregators to be registered. Now, there is a provision in the same rules, same guidelines, that there is a suspension that can be done or a cancellation that can be done of licenses if there is a failure by these aggregators to provide safety of the rider or the driver, or if there is a financial inconsistency with regard to fare, or if the aggregator fails to comply with the guidelines. Guidelines specifically deals with amount, with redressal mechanism, with, uh, with how much they can charge how much transparency they have to keep also in case of any financial dwindling that has been done by by these aggregators so in all these scenarios uh, there can be a suspension or a cancellation of the aggregator now the second thing which which the department can do is issue a show cause notice to the aggregator if they have received more than three suspensions in one financial year i would say that this is where we need an amendment this is where we need a change that we cannot with the kind of uh, 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 kind of existence these these platforms have and how they have uh, uh, been part and parcel of the lifestyle of, of of citizens i think this this has to be changed from three complaints of suspension in a year but rather there should be a proper looking into uh, their conditions their their fulfilling of these guidelines and authority need to take a proactive uh, measure against that now how this can be done we as a user have a right to complain to the authority authority itself can to a motto take a cognizance of of any kind of uh, 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 failures by these aggregators of these guidelines issued by uh, issued under the motor vehicle act and and in absence in, in 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 after the three if they fail to do so they can cancel the license they can impose penalties and uh, uh, there can be a six month of expansion after that okay. there can be an appeal so there would be a heavy penalty that can be imposed or there would be a loss of business which will make these aggregators to comply with guidelines the consumer is a very easy Okay, well, in uh, fact, uh, a warning of the sorts has also... A warning of the sorts has also come from the centre today after this crucial meeting. Bijan Mishra also wanted to come in. You know, the government gave them ground to do business here in India. And when it all started in India, the regulations were not really very tough. When the, uh, you know, commuters today are not uh, getting an easy ride. Tra dra traveling via a cab is not a joyride anymore for the commuters. So that is the reason why this issue has been raised. That's the reason why the government has also issued a warning. You know, uh, Ina, firstly, I would like to tell you that Khushbu has put it very beautifully. You know, all the issues, she has put it very beautifully in terms of how they should conduct themselves when they are given a license to do business. Firstly, these aggregators had has got no regulators till the CCPA or till the Department of Consumer Affairs did not wake up. And we are not here to protect the investors. Please understand. We are here to protect the interest of the consumers and we want that the business should grow in a manner that which is ethical. We can't allow unethical business practices we allowed markets to open up. We allowed the Kalipili, uh, uh, you know, taxis to compete with good practices. We did not allow them to compete in a manner which is uneven, unequal. So they created a kind of a monopoly. It is high time even the Competition Commission of India, you know, investigates the working of these, you know, algorithms or so-called 
they, these uh, monopolies which are now flourishing in our country. We have to understand the nuances. These investors are always here to protect themselves to make a good return on the profit and make you know profiteering instead of profit. We don't want to allow profiteering in our country. Please, for heaven's sake, you investors have done enough of this profiteering out of our country. It is high time our country realizes it and only allows good ethical investors to come in into our country, which we have got. We have got good investors in our country who wants to do ethical businesses. We don't want the foreign money to come in to conduct unethical businesses. Please, for heaven's sake, understand that. We wanted good examples to be set. We did not want Ola over to set these kind of examples, which are absolutely deterrent in the interest of the consumers and in the interest of the uh, country. Lastly, I want to tell you, Dr. Dua also raised a very important point. You see, we want prompt redressal. We want compensation. We don't want people to lose their license or not to conduct business. If they have done something wrong, we don't want to hear sorry, we will not do it again. No, you please give me an easy refund of my money because I had a bad experience. You know, then they will learn a lesson. If we don't have an easy refund policy, we don't have a good kind of an exchange policy, we will never be able to grow like other countries have grown in terms of economy. In our country, we need good ethical business practices based on good rules and regulations. We want to bring in India-centric rules and regulations. I'm not saying copy US or copy Europe. Let's make India a destination for people to come and make India a destination which will encourage good ethical businesses to be conducted in our country. And this is what we have been promoting. And you know, the, one of the panel members, he doesn't know the history. For 40 years, we had to fight with the government literally to change the whole culture. To change the culture, it takes time. And we don't want that when we change the culture, somebody from the top parachutes and comes down and makes money out of that change in culture and comes in with a culture which is detrimental to the country and the citizens. So please, for heaven's sake, don't promote your hard-earned money on such kind of a businesses which actually squeezes the consumer and sucks them out and then, and then puts them into anxieties. We don't want these kind of businesses to come into India. You can, um, I was happy with Kali Pili for that matter. Hmm. I was happy okay. with that. I'll get Mr. Murthy to respond to what you've said, Mr. Bijan Mishra. But Dr. Ajay Dua, you know, the way the complaints are coming and the way the complaints are increasing almost on a daily basis, you know, it seems Ola and Uber today and other cab aggregators have become the auto wallas of 2020s. Now, you know, the issue that we are raising today is genuine because you know, it is impacting the people on a daily basis. Now, Dr. Ajay Dua, uh, Venture Capital, of course, saw a business opportunity. They made good money. But today, it is about ethics. It is about policies. The drivers, till about a few years ago, who wanted to associate themselves, who wanted to be a part of Ola's and Uber's in the country, today are talking about these opaque policies. Certainly. You are absolutely on the dot in this respect, we opened up in India to foreign capital, not, not for let, letting them come in and exploit our consumers and take advantage of the fact that our market is like that of a continent, size of a continent, the United States, plus all the other North American countries or all the European countries put together and still probably more. So we should, when we are giving this advantage of scale to these investors and service providers of almost items of daily use or services of daily use, there is no reason for us to not have at least the same level of consumer protection as it exists in the advanced countries. I'm absolutely clear in my mind that we, we have to look at our customers. We don't have to look at what technology, what uh, kind of so, so a small amount of money which they bring into the country in this ag cab aggregation business is not like any great amount of money, but what they take back, we analyze that, that's several times, several fold more than what they brought in. So let us look at how we protect our customers, how we, and you take it from me, given our size 
and the fact that we are working in a democratic, legalistic manner, people will continue to flock in here, even with our tightening of rules, rather than go to, say, China or Nigeria or Indonesia, where the rule of law probably doesn't prevail the way it does in India. That's number one point. Second, I think sir, a gentleman mm -hmm. said very rightly, saying Kalipuri taxis were there, scooterwalas were there, and in order to improve their services and get more kind of prompt taxis or scooters, we have a benefit. Yes, you have a benefit because the earlier Fiat car or ambassador car or standard, there were just three cars until we opened up in the 90s. Their total production was 40,000 cars a year. Today, one of these, we have 22 producers of or manufacturers of cars in the country. Many of them produce 40,000 cars themselves per month. Many produce, Maruti and others produce many more. The question is, so the advantage is not because the we, customers have increased, the car manufacturing has increased, taxi, more taxis are coming, more auto rickshaws are coming. So we, we just can't say, we should be happy that now we can get a taxi within five minutes. Earlier, it used to take two hours or three hours to get one, and then you have to go and stand at a taxi stand, etc. I don't think that's a justifiable reason for not ensuring that our customers, consumers, get a fair deal, a deal at least as fair as it is in the Western world. If anything, they need to be protected more because they are not as literate and the ways and means which are available to them for redressal right. are also not as efficient or as prompt as they are in the developed world. Absolutely. Kushbu wanted to make a point as well. Then I'll go across to Mr. Mahesh Murthy. Kushbu, go ahead. Of uh, uh, riders who are being suffering from paying cancellation fees without their fault. And this aspect of uh, unfair trade practices by uh, by these aggregators have been received as a numerous complaints by people uh, uh, to the CCPA also. Now, now looking at that, let's take, I want to just put on one example that Uber in Australia admitted that it made or uh, it made false or a misleading statement in cancellation warning messages and taxi fare estimates, according to Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. As on date, Uber pays $26 million Australian dollar penalties for adopting these illegal practices. Coming back, see, these practices are there. There are numerous complaints. The issue is not just coming up because we are thinking, but yes, issue persists. Issue persists not just for users, but also for drivers. Drivers are also facing problems, whereas these aggregators are concerned. So looking at, looking at the holistic approach, I think, I think it's a very good approach that in addition to the guidelines which was issued under the Motor Vehicle Act, these aggregators are again called, given a chance to have a meeting with CCPA and so that they can discuss the issues at length and breadth and will formulate a fresh guideline to protect themselves and also to protect customers. So I think, I think it's a very holistic approach to take. We are not stopping. We are not canceling licenses of, of, of uh, these aggregators. At the same time, uh, uh, the difficulties faced by the consumers cannot be ignored. Absolutely. Mr. Mahesh Murthy, Autowalas used to say, Vaha nahi jana, meter nahi chalega. And eventually, uh, you know, the commuters used to get disappointed. Now, similar issues are being faced uh, by commuters uh, via these, uh, you know, Olas and Ubers as well. So, you know, the problem remains the same for commuters. And that's why I'm asking you, don't you think probably the cab aggregators also need to relook at their business model because they will not only lose customers, but eventually drivers as well, who are also equally unhappy. Yes, to unmute. Could you we unmute yourself? Uh, am, I, am I audible? Yeah. So if you use, uh, I have two, two yes, points in response. Ahead. One is one is about our behavior. If you use an Ola, which is an Indian company, but you use Ola in England, you will not have any such problem. If you use Uber, and I've used Uber in India and four other countries, uh, there's no problem outside of India. If you use Didi in China, there is no such problem. 
if you use Gojek in Indonesia, and I have, there is no such problem, right? So the problem you have is not a multinational problem. It is one that is uniquely limited to India. That's the first point I wanted to make. The point is that we are used to asking the uh, the driver of the vehicle, aap kahi jaoge kya? you yourself said that the, uh, the driver called and asked, you're not supposed to pick up the call. You're not supposed to tell him. You're not supposed to ask him where to go. You don't have to. In fact, I never do. And if a guy cancels, that's okay. But you can't no keep on waiting cancels. endlessly, Mr. Mahesh Murthy. Well, ma'am, ma'am, I was don't... waiting for no. over I, 10 minutes, even point? though the okay, app I, showed I, me I eight you, minute you made, time. Can I make my point? You know, I understand that you, I'm, I'm just saying that you have rights today that, uh, that in some ways we have spoiled the drivers here in Uber and Ola in India, that you do not have any problems with the same Uber and Ola drivers outside India. The second point that I wanted to make is that, uh, sure, you know... So uh, problems you're you saying are way. with the commuters, not with the cab aggregators. The, the point is, the, yeah, the problem actually is that you actually do not have to tell the cab cabbie where you're going in the case of Uber or Ola. You're not supposed to. If you tell him you're giving him an opportunity to cancel, do not pick his call. Uh, insist that he comes. If he cancels, that's okay, right? Once the thing is they are spoiled in India, you will not find the same problem with Uber or Ola anywhere else in the world outside of India. It's a uniquely Indian problem which has nothing to do with the multinational policies. Yes, can they be stricter out here and can, can they cancel the licenses out here? Absolutely. But in some ways, the drivers are the ones who, who are the ones saying that many jaunga, ajo karna karlo. So you can actually but Mr. Murthy, Uber, what Ola you are telling us, we do not see that in the FAQs that are there in the app that we download, that we use. It does not say you're not supposed to pick up the uh, phone law. call when a driver is calling because you as a commuter Absolutely. do not know whether the driver is, is calling there. you to ask what your destination is to be able to cancel it or he's calling you to tell you that he's about to reach. In the no drivers, in fact, call the commuters, the, reason, the passengers if, if asking the where why you're are you map, supposed to go. The reason why you're seeing a map is because you know where the car is, where the, you know where the driver is. There is no reason to pick the phone. The driver will call because he's trying to get a better ride than you. All right? Uh, and that's the wrong thing. But you, you know, while certainly the aggregator can do its own bit in making sure the drivers don't call, but if the driver calls as a consumer, we can do our bit by saying, we will not pick up, we will not tell him, bhaiya, idhar jaoge kya? We will not, just don't. All right? That's one big step. We have spoiled them in India because we have done, we have this habit from auto rickshaw, bhaiya jaoge kya? Bhaiya, please jao. Right? You don't have to do that with the aggregators. That's the first part. And the second part but is that... But that is you know, one example, Mr. Mahesh Bhuti, that you're talking about. It is about, uh, you know, uh, the driver cancelling the ride because he does not want to go to a certain location. So you have here held the commuter responsible. Uh, you are saying the commuter, the passenger shouldn't have really picked up the phone call. Let me give you another yes. example, which I also mentioned in my introduction. If you heard me talk about it, uh, you know, another very senior journalist recently had written on social media as well about the uh, incident that he had to face. It is about Ola this time, uh, which had actually charged him twice for one ride. One, uh, the money was taken uh, in cash and second, on its own via Ola money, the money was detect, uh, deducted. You know, there was no phone number to contact Ola. The person had to approach the police to eventually find out, you know, who this driver was. Why has he taken the money, uh, the you know, payment in cash? So there was a lot of problem that even this person had to face. That is another issue that passengers today are facing. So that, and these I, are genuine issues that I'm talking about. I am I'm, I'm, I'm also talking about genuine issues. The point is you have exactly, have you had these issues multiplied by 10, as the other gentleman said, you know, in uh, 10 years ago before they came in. I just want to put things in perspective. I am not saying Ober and Ula blame this. I'm saying let's put the blame where it belongs. It is in the regulation in this country. The fact that we have never regulated the Kali Peelis, the auto rickshaws, nor have we related the, the mafia who own all the taxis that are rented out to Uber and Ola. Right? The drivers don't own most of the cars. There's a Malik who owns the car who's out there driving them. Right? The point is, can Ola and Uber get better? Yes. But what is the three points that are needed? Ola and Uber can get better. The government can get better. And we, the consumers, can get better in how we, we behave with them. We should not be asking them, bhaiya jaoge kya? That's the first one. Once we so stop Ola and Uber jaoge should jaoge be shut by government till Indians learn point. these rights no, that you're no, talking no. about there and learn to protect to themselves. Of course... Yes. There are three things that have to happen simultaneously. I'm sorry. Okay. That you made a, you, 
But you, you, you mentioned, Mr. Murthy, that, you know, the problems that you're talking about are only faced in India and nowhere else. I appreciate so, all of I you. I'm completely out of time. I appreciate all of you for joining us here on Urban Debate this evening.